Hi guys, welcome back to Golden Reviewer. So here I have five devices. There are the latest smartphones, Pixel 7 Pro, Mi 12T Pro, Vivo X90, iPhone 14 Pro Max, and Vivo X90 Pro Plus. So today the main focus for us is to benchmark them and try to compare the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 to the other latest and best SoCs on the market and see how much Qualcomm has improved. So we'll start with N22, and just now I show you all the devices are cool before we start the benchmark, and this will hold true for all the benchmarks we run, so in between them, we leave enough time for the devices to cool down. The room temperature is around 25 degrees, so after the test, I'll measure the temperature again to see how much heat they generate as well, right? So now let's fast forward the benchmark. All right, now the benchmark is done. Let's measure the device temperatures. And uh, here actually we see that uh, the Dimensity 9200 as well as the Google Tensor G2 are a bit hotter than the rest. And the uh, Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1, Apple A16, and uh, 8 Gen 2 are at pretty similar temperatures, which are quite good. And then performance-wise, the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 is the fastest of them all and followed by Dimensity 9200, and then Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1, and lastly, Google Tensor G2. As for Apple, because the scoring mechanism is a little bit different, you can't really directly compare them. So I'll leave that out. Okay, next, let's move on to our next benchmark, which will be Geekbench 5. And here are the results. So the iPhone 14 Pro Max, the Apple A16 still leads in terms of CPU performance. But here we see that the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 is really the fastest Android SoC as of now in terms of CPU performance. Next, let's do a GPU benchmark, which will be 3D Mark. And here for the results, we see that the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 is the fastest mobile SoC for both Android and iOS, followed by Dimensity 9200. Both are actually faster than the Apple A16 in G GPU performance, which is nice. Because if you look at the Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1, it's still quite much slower than the Apple A16. So both the Qualcomm and MTK has improved so much. Next, let's test GFX Bench. This is also a GPU test. There are so many tests in this app, so we'll just choose two of the most representative ones to benchmark, right? Let's go. Here we see a similar pattern, the Apple A16 it was actually faster than any of the Android SoCs, but no more. The Dimensity 9200 and Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 are faster than Apple A16, and here the 8 Gen 2 is still a little bit faster than the Dimensity 9200, which makes it the fastest smartphone GPU as of now. I know many of you are more concerned about the sustained performance or, or stability, for these devices because um, peak performance isn't everything, right? Because nobody plays game only for one or two minutes. It, it doesn't matter how fast it is if it cannot last. So we'll do the 3D Mark stress test, which will last 20 minutes and it will stress the GPU to their max and see how well they hold the peak performance. Okay, so now we see something interesting. The Mi 12T Pro, which has the 8 Plus Gen 1, as well as the X90 with the Snap, uh, Dimensity 9200, they overheat and the test cannot finish. Actually, this is not to say that these two SoCs are bad or inefficient SoCs. It's just that uh, maybe they do generate quite a lot of heat and uh, the manufacturer actually try to push the envelope uh, maybe too far. They don't reduce the frequency when the temperature goes up and uh, try to maintain the performance and eventually the device overheats, right? But uh, all the other three devices are okay. And uh, let's fast forward to the end. And in this test is where the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 really shines, right? So here we see that uh, not only it has the highest peak performance, even the after throttling, it also 
performs the best. And the amazing thing is that even the lowest loop score on the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 is higher than the peak performance on the Apple A16. And that is really impressive. And uh, our final test will be a CPU stability test. Okay, so here I used the software called the CPU throttling test. You can download this on Play Store. Uh, however, it's not available for iPhone, so we cannot do this for the iPhone, but we'll test and compare the four Android devices. So this test will basically try to utilize all the CPU cores, uh, which all of them have eight of them, and uh, it will last 20 minutes. So we'll see how the devices uh, perform, both in terms of performance as well as uh, temperature, uh, when the CPU is under full load for 20 minutes. Right? Let's fast forward. Okay, the test has finished, and uh, if you look at the performance scores, right, the average performance, the Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 is actually better than the 8 Gen 2 in this test. You see that is around the 380k compared to 360k on the 8 Gen 2. However, I think that is because the Xiaomi 12T Pro is actually much more aggressive in terms of uh, thermal controls which you can tell by the temperature of these devices. The Xiaomi 12T Pro reach uh, 45.8, which is much hotter than any of the other devices, right? So I think the two Vivo devices at 40 and 41, that is pretty reasonable. And uh, Pixel is uh, at lowest temperature, but the performance is really pretty bad. Anyway, if you've been following my Twitter, I've tried to tell you that uh, the 8 Gen 2 CPU part is not hugely improved over the 8 Plus Gen 1. Not to say that it's bad because 8 Plus Gen 1 itself is pretty good. It's just like there is no huge upgrade like in the GPU department. Alright guys, I think that's all for today's video. I hope you enjoy the content. Thank you for watching and uh, see you next time.